We're really happy uh, to welcome into the Pipeline podcast our friend uh, Taylor Tremell. And before we kind of dig into it, Taylor, there's a, a little bit of video we saw that we wanted to, we wanted to play for you uh, and, and get your reaction from. So here it is. My name is pronounced Tremell. It stinks because there's a Hall of Famer, the same last name as me, and he pronounces it Trammel. So I just got the bad end of the stick. I tell my favorite part of all that was like, <sighs> how many times have you had to explain that your last name is Tremel? Oh my goodness, this is a lot daily. Um, especially, you know, being on a new team again. It's a lot of times it's, hey, there goes Taylor Trammell. And I'm like, it's Trammell. But, you know, I I got a chance to – actually, I got a chance to meet uh, Alan Trammell uh, in 2018. And I think that was one of the coolest experiences all. Like, for me, personally, just to meet him and, you know, him just being just so nice and genuine to me, I think that was one of the coolest experiences of uh, pr probably my – life really um but yeah it does think that he pronounces it trammel and everybody in the baseball world knows that one name as one way until i just came around and said nope it's not that <laughs> we changed it i mean you mentioned uh you mentioned you know another team it's one of the reasons why we wanted to talk to you today i mean it's always good to talk to you uh but you, you were in this rare experience of getting traded two years in a row at the trade deadline. So I know the first time it can be a bit of your world's turned upside down. You understand how it works now. I mean, the world is upside down with everything that's been going on, but take us through what the, this experience was like in terms of finding out about the trade and having to figure out how to get from the Padres alternate site in San Diego to the Mariners alternate site in, in Tacoma. Yeah, so for me, it was um, the first – so backtrack to last year in 2019, I got traded, and I got traded mid-game. So there was not really any time for me to, like, like think or anything like that. It was like, hey, boom, you just got traded, see ya. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, like, what's going on? I had no idea what was – like, what to expect. I didn't hear anything from anybody. The uh, only person I really was communicating with my, was with my agent. And I'm just like, what's going on? And I ended up this year, uh, I actually kind of had an idea going, uh, not really the day of, I had an idea of what kind of what could happen, um, possibilities that could happen. And it was, uh, you know, it was, it was different. I ended up getting, well, from when I got traded, um, the next day, I uh, went and got my stuff. And then I, I drove from, uh, they got me a, uh, a tr SUV. I uh, drove to San Di from San Diego to LA because they were playing the Angels, and I uh, had to do my testing again. And they had a fairly quick test, and so I just sat in the dugout and watched the game. And uh, watched the game they won, and so I ended up uh, flying back with the the big league club, and I thought that was really cool. And then uh, from there. Uh, we flew back, and I came out here to Tacoma. So, you you know, you're in the dugout. You fly back with them. At any point, you want to be like, I, I can stick around, you know. I'm, I'm happy to stay. Yeah, I, I told some people that. I'm like, they were like, you know, a whole bunch – a lot of guys were asking, like, hey, so, we're, like, are you here? And I'm like, no, 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 I got to go to Tacoma. But, you know, it, it would be nice to be here. You know, I looked at, like, their little – their uh, their spread – and everything like that. And I was like, yeah, I could, I could get used to this. So I thought that was uh, really awesome. And it stinks. I didn't get to get, well, I should have got like one of those like plastic bags and like took everything with me, you know, <laughs> that's what I should have done. You should have. Well, you know, hopefully you'll get the chance to get that spread again soon for, for real and not for, you yeah. know, not just in a, in a, in a flyby, but let's talk a little bit about where you are uh, because, you know, we haven't seen you play baseball in, in quite some time, but, you know, you're coming off a, a 2019, and we've talked about it, was, was definitely up and down, but you finished really well. You had a, a really strong showing in spring training before the, the shutdown. And then, you know, we don't really know what happened you know, to you after. How, how do you feel that you've been performing as much as there, you know, there's competition in the alternate site camps? 
uh, you know, were you able to carry over what you were doing in, in big league camp with the Padres during this, this time waiting for, for the first call up and, and now of course the trade? Yeah. So, uh, so we ended up going, uh, the quarantine, everything like that. And then, uh, I don't know if it's spring training 2.0 or summer camp. I don't know which way to call it, but I'll say spring training 2.0. Uh, there were a lot of things I, uh, I needed to work on, um, especially like not really playing at all, not really doing much in that time. Uh, I really had to like figure out, like figure out everything again um, because I'm just, you're doing the same thing over and over again. You're not sure when you're going to play and it takes a toll on you in all honesty. And, I ended up uh, going there, eh, eh, average, average, not really where I wanted to be, um, you know, competing and stuff like that. And then we get to our alternate site. And that was when I got a chance to uh, actually get to a guy who, uh, who really has not just my baseball career, but in my life has changed, like changed me, uh, has impacted my life a lot. Uh, and that's Johnny Washington. Uh, I got a chance to be with Johnny for – however long we were out there and honestly I feel really good um the at bats that I was uh, that I was taking uh they were solid at bats um I felt comfortable I felt like uh I was doing damage um I I don't really know like the stats or anything like that I think there was one point he sent me like stats and it was like a uh I think it was like three sorry can you see me Okay, yes. So it was probably like, uh, I think I was hitting like 330-something um, with like, I think I ended up having like six or seven home runs during the time, uh, just driving the ball, getting my pitch, and just honestly being the, the best person that I can be. And I said this in another, uh, in another, another interview, and um, can, you hear, can you see me still? Sorry, I apologize. Um, so – ended up getting a chance to uh, said this in another interview, but uh, I got a chance to honestly talk to him. And he was, uh, uh, he was very honest with me. You know, he looked at my swing, he, he talked to me and honestly, I was just, just being honest with him. I said, Hey, look, what do you, what do you see out of me, man? He pretty much told me, he was like, you're, you're a big guy that plays small right now, but we're going to change that. And that was probably, I want to say, in late June. And I was like, first I, at first I was kind of just like, okay. I was like, get it. And then I kind of thought, and I was like, he's being honest with me. He's not just saying that, you know, because that nobody's ever told me anything along those lines. And he said, we're going to get you there. And he said, I'm going to just help you and guide you, but you're going to put in the work. And so, um, like right now, I, I feel great. Uh, the things that we have been working on, the things that we have, uh, been the long days, the phone conversations, the extra work, the early work, anything and everything that we have done. Uh, he's been there with me along the ride. And I feel right now just with my swing as, a baseball player, not just with my swing, but as a baseball player, I feel free. Um, I just feel like a different player right now. That's, that's exciting to hear. I'm adjusting my, my fantasy baseball projections for you. At least 25 homers in your rookie year now. Because <laughs> you played smaller before. Um, yeah. You know, you're, you're going from, you know, one organization, which is known as having one of the, if not the best farm systems in the Padres, uh, you know, maybe weakened ever so slightly because they keep sending guys to the big leagues, to another one which is only getting better and better in the Seattle Mariners. What did you know uh, about the the Mariners? You know, as you're sort of heading to it, and what have you what have you been able to glean so far? Uh, you know, there are some talented young outfielders in, in that system now, along with you. Yeah, I've I've actually had a chance to meet those guys. I've, I've met a lot of them uh, even before I came over here. Uh, just talking uh, purely prospects um, and guys in the outfield. I, I'm, I grew not grew up, but um, I got I know uh, Kyle. I know K. Lou, uh, Kyle Lewis. I know him. Uh, I got a chance to meet uh, Julio Rodriguez. 
uh, last year, actually, we met in the parking lot in Peoria. Um, he was going toward, to the field, and I was leaving the field uh, after the season. So uh, that was a good chance, and I got a chance to meet him. And by far, one of the better human beings uh, in baseball. He's unbelievable. Uh, he's wise beyond his years, and he's just a great kid, and he's extremely smart. I think that a kid his age, um, he told me, I think he learned, uh, he started to learn, speak English like four years ago. I think that's so impressive. Uh, I think guys who are able to be bilingual uh, in that short amount of time, I think that's so impressive. And it blows my mind whenever I hear guys talk and they have conversations with us uh, in English. And it makes us feel comfortable, but I know it can't be that comfortable for them. And I think that that is an unbelievable uh, trait to have and kudos to him. And I got a chance to meet Jared uh, along with a lot of other guys, Braden Bishop, um, Jake Frey. I was with these guys uh, today um, and, you know, uh, Deloche as well. So uh, I'm, I'm probably just, you know, skimming the surface on how many guys we have here, but uh, I got a chance to meet those guys and I know them. We, we make each other better. Um, I think that's the, the, the bottom line of everything. Uh, obviously, it's competition. Obviously, there's uh, everybody wants to be up there in Cincinnati. That's that's a given. Um, but at the end of the day, I think we all have the same mindset of we want to get each other better because at the end of the day, we want to win. Nobody wants to be on a losing team. That that's just obvious for everything. We all have fun with the game. We all play loose we all play free and when you lose it's just not as fun it's I mean it's the, it's a given so that was very fun the chance that I got to meet those guys and even all guys across the organization that I know uh, it was a great chance for me to uh, meet them or you know see them again and be teammates with those guys it's funny I didn't even think about the fact that you were in the same spring training facility um, spring training feels like <laughs> four million years ago and yes. and you only spent one spring training there but at least you'll know how to get there you know for for, <laughs> for uh for next spring so that's a good thing and yeah julio and and jared kelnick were the two that really popped to mind but then you see what kyle lewis is doing and you see you think you, know, you do the math and yes people do some crazy shifting but i haven't seen a four-man outfield um so that's where the competition part probably comes into play in terms of figuring out you know who's going to play where, but that I suppose that's a bridge you cross once you get there. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I wanted to, to close on a, on a more serious note um, with, with you, Taylor, because you, you and I have traded messages and things like that. We're, we're at a moment in our, in our nation's history where there's a lot going on uh, across the board. Uh, we've, we've touched on the pandemic a little bit and how it's impacted baseball. But it's also shined a, a greater light on, on a lot of the inequalities and inequities in, in, in our country. And I think that's filtered down to baseball. And there have been a lot of players who have been speaking out in different ways. I know that you've not shied away from saying things on social media when you felt it appropriate. Um, and it's interesting you, you mentioned uh, some of the guys that you're playing with. Braden Bishop has been extremely vocal, uh, which I think is, is important. But um, you know, you're not an established guy in the big leagues. Maybe you don't have the same kind of platform that some of these other players have who have been so vocal. But, you know, where, how do you see where you fit in, you know, as a player of color coming up to the big leagues in this moment where it, it, this has been so much, thankfully, been a part of, of, of the conversation? Yes. Yeah, so for me, it is... It's, it's what I lived through. And uh, I'd be lying if I were to tell you I didn't think about, you know, certain things to say uh, along the lines of just, hey, I'm, you know, I'm not establishing the big leagues. You know, I, have, I don't have time there. I don't, you know, I'm not like uh, some of these guys that uh, who are established, who are, um, you know, I would say face, some of the faces of baseball. You know, I look at guys like Amir Garrett, uh, Tim Anderson, Dexter Fowler. D. Gordon, you look at all these guys and it's like, you know, I'm not where they are. Um, and I, I really thought a lot about it. And 
it took some time for me to honestly just think about it, um, take time to actually make sure that what I'm saying is uh, what is true to me and what is actually going on in the world. And at the end of the day, I really just said, if I can impact one person's life um, that could change the way they view me, the way they view how other people are treated, that's a win for me. And so I, I, I understood that I, I understand that I have a, a fairly decent amount of uh, followings on my social media. If I can help those guys who are on the fence of like, we don't understand what you guys are talking about. We don't understand why um, this Black Lives Matter uh, thing is a thing, why you guys are honestly tired and upset. We don't understand it. If I can just explain it to them, I think that's, that's getting more out of it. I don't ever like to just go off of things uh, based on pure emotion. I like to think things through for the most part and make sure that people understand what I go through, uh, what the guys who I'm around, the people who they – uh, who they praise, who they look at every single day on their TV screens. If they didn't play these sports, if they didn't, um, if they weren't where they are right now, you guys would see them a little bit differently. Or not if you, not if you per se, but certain other people might see them differently. And I want people to understand it's it's not just me. It's not just, like I said, Dexter Fowler. It's not just uh, all these guys that, you know, I named off. It's the people who are supposedly, people say they're not important or they're irrelevant or just certain things like that. I just wanted to make what I have gone through in my life, uh, what I've seen, what I have uh, gone through. Those things are the things I want to bring light to so people can understand what is going on in this country and in this world. We could spend hours on this topic uh, and, you know, I look forward to you continuing to use your voice, Taylor, as you always have, um, you know, and for that platform to grow once you do get to the big leagues. I hope it happens soon. Um, the powder blue looked good on you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, hopefully you'll get to, to wear that uh, soon. and. Uh, you know, you've, you've handled all this so well, you know, getting treated twice is, is a lot. And uh, we'll, let you, we'll let you go and go back to focusing on uh, getting to know your new organization and showing them, uh, showing them what you can do. Taylor, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jonathan. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much.